Hey, welcome everyone to the SoCal Car Scene Podcast, the exclusive place for coverage of car culture in Southern California and the personalities that drive it. I'm your host, Dean Marash, speaking of personalities, right? Joining us today is car fabricator and builder and freshly minted Iowa House Representative, Sherilyn Westrick. But before we get started, I need to let you know that this podcast is brought to you by our good friends at SeaTac and Wicked Automotive Detailing. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, The SoCal Car Scene, because you never want to miss an episode, right? Let me take a few minutes and introduce you to our very, very special guest, Sherilyn Westridge. Sherilyn is well known as a car builder on the A-team on the hit show Overhaul with the one and only Chip Foose. She helped build over 70 plus cars and appeared on over 75 episodes on that amazing show. She brings all of the car fab skills to the table, welding, fabricating, wiring, gauge restoration, to name a few. She's also appeared as a fabricator and builder on the show on shows such as Rock My RV with Brent Michaels, Detroit Muscle and All Girls Factory 5 build on the Power Block. She now makes appearances at car shows, large and small, including hosting and appearing on the official video for the NSRA, Street Rod Louisville Nationals. She also is a proud owner of a company that specializes in hydraulic clutch pedal kits, Malwood, Malwood USA. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Sherilyn has worked alongside some of the most well-known builders in the industry in Orange County and LA, including BS Industries with Bodie Straub, Circle City Hot Rods, Cambra Rod Shop, Poor Boys, Curtis Speed Equipment with Mike Curtis, North Hollywood Speedometer, Redline Gauge Works, just to name a few. And believe it or not, she's added to her extensive resume, and now it includes Iowa State Representative. Sherilyn, hey, thanks for joining us on the SoCal Car Scene. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, you make me sound really cool. I'm, I got to live up to that reputation now. Well, you're not only cool, but you're important and you're accomplished and uh, you're, um, you know, an integral part of the car scene. A lot of people uh, in the car world, car scene, know you by Sherry, but uh, we'll, we'll go with Sherry or Sherilyn. I don't know. You, Either way, it doesn't upset you too much? It does not. My friends call me Sherry, but officially, I mean, that's my real name. It's Sherilyn okay. Westrich. So okay. um, I like both. I better I better stick to Sherilyn until I earn the Sherry thing by the end of the show. I'll let you know when we're friends. When we get to be close friends. Hey, give yeah. me the friend sign. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that is. <laughs> okay, the friend sign. Hey, uh, full disclosure, right? I reached out to you to be a guest on our show, I don't know, a month or two ago. And honestly, I didn't know you'd been elected in the House, uh, Iowa House of Representatives, or that you were even uh, had a campaign for such things. What the heck? Was life too easy? What, what inspired you? You know, I'll tell you what, most of my friends are shocked. They just, you know, they know me from working together in the shop, and then suddenly I'm running for office. And, but you know what? I think a lot of people, uh, at least my friends, say they wish they could do it. And um, it's just something that, that, uh, and now that I'm, now that I'm there, I've, I've been uh, two weeks in the legislature, and I wish I had done that when I was, you know, 21. I, it is the most exciting job, and it, it's, it's nonstop action. I mean, it's just go, go, go all day long, and I love it. I'm having the time of my life, to be honest. That's great to hear. You know, we all think of, oh, politics is right up there with being a lawyer. You know, it's just, you know, has that kind of, you know, yeah. I feel like who ah, really, you know, but who does that? It's the connotation, but, but I'll tell you what, um, the, the people that I'm working with are just some of the most, uh, down to earth, kind people, a lot of lawyers, they are up there. They are there. Sorry. And, tell and, them I apologize. No, no. Cause I tell them, Hey, this is what we all think of you guys. And they know it, but, but, um, okay. Okay. Honestly, they're, the, the, they're really kind, caring people and they care right. about Iowa. They care about, you know, our country. And, and that's why I'm there is that, you know, I care about Iowa. I care about our country. I want things to be nice for us and for everybody's kids, everybody's grandkids. You know, it's, it's just important to me to, to keep things decent and, and keep things nice. And, and so awesome. I, you know, that, that's why awesome. I, I decided to do well, it. And, and it's working. I, th I think it's just like the best thing I've ever done. Well, it's great to hear. We don't see too many gearheads join the ranks of the political class. And, you know, uh, is there something from your, you know, car lifestyle, car career that prepped you or made you really, um, you know, put you in a good position for this or? Uh... Sure. You know, there's, you know, you're in the shop. There's a lot of debate going on. 
somebody uh-huh. wants to do it like this, you want to do it like that, and you got to have a debate that really preps you. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of debate there, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, and you know, it's a male driven industry, uh, politics. Right. And in the shop. And so uh, I think, you know, I'm very comfortable there. I'm comfortable working with guys and I'm, and uh, it's very comfortable for me up at the Capitol um, working with a lot of men. Um, I just, I fit right in. It's, it's really good. And I can now support the SEMA pack because there's a lot of legislation that goes through that the SEMA pack wants wow. to support that they care about. And I reached out to them. They supported me and backed my campaign. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I have to thank them by helping all of us, all, everybody in the car industry, you. you know, we got it. Well, thank you. You know, people want to build limited production cars with limited VINs. And, you know, they recently passed some legislation on that. And here in California, you know, if, we, if your car is not older than 1976, you still got to go down and get it smog, which is almost next to impossible. So, so there's some things that are really pressing for a lot of your average car guys and gals. And uh, so SEMA. Your phone is ringing. Can you hear that? I'm oh, sorry. Is it really? Yep. Okay, good. You can't hear it. Go ahead. No, my hearing shot. No, <laughs> it was very faint. So not so bad. People are probably ordering clutch assemblies. Yeah, Malwood's phone is always ringing. You just got, you know, I'm more. Is that like the bat phone? phone? Yeah. Do you have different <laughs> phones? Maybe people want to know. Do you have phones? That reminds me, I'm going to turn my ring down, by the way. Uh, do you have different phones, one for the, the capital and one for the car parts? And I do. Something I like do. that? I have to keep through a personal phone and then a business phone and then one for, for politics. But you, what you were saying is right. Um, there are things that, that we really need to keep an eye on to make sure that we don't lose our ability to you know, raise cars, to um, drive our hot rods, to modify our vehicles. Um, all that stuff, and and they're trying to take those things away from us for sure. They, you know, they want uh, only electric cars out there. Well, that's not going to fly with me. So, good. Um, cool. You know, when Great it comes to, out to campaigning next year, remember that and send a big donation so I can get reelected, so I can protect our hot rod industry. I may have to start my own uh, GoFundMe page just to for you know contributing to your campaign. Whatever it is, it sounds good on cards. We're all in. Absolutely. Uh, hot, hot rod builder pack western yeah. is there such a thing have you started that the hot rod builder pack no, I, thought, I thought you're gonna start that oh you're <laughs> counting on me okay all right well let's SEMA, SEMA pack. there's sema pack so they're they're already doing it you know okay yeah, i love sema so congratulations on all that but hey we need to we need to flip the script and start talking about cars and wrenches uh, you know we might have thrown some people for a curve by talking about politics but at least we were talking about cars in a political environment. So that was good. But let's talk about turning wrenches. Uh, what was your first job working on cars? Can you remember that far back? Yeah, you know, it was, you know, a different time back, you know, 20 years ago. And uh, nobody wanted me to work in their shop. You know, I, I wanted to work at a radiator shop because I was really lucky. <laughs> yeah, radiators. those are the best. Yeah, ridiculous. But um, and they, they said, oh yeah, you could work down here. You can answer the phones and you can drive the shop, the shop truck. And I was like, no, I, I want to, I want to rebuild radiators. I want to do, nope. So, um, I finally ended up getting a job. Um, <clears throat> Shannon from Redline Gauge Works. Yep. He, uh, talked to the guys at North Hollywood Speedometer and I got a job there. And so that was the first, uh, the first experience actually working on at least, you know, gauges and speedometers, if not cars. So, um, you know, before that, it was just me in my driveway working on Mopars. I was a Mopar, no car back then. And, um, you know, I had chargers, super bees um, and coronets and, and uh, yeah. And then I got the job at the speedometer shop. And uh, life must and actually, have been good. I mean, you, you're uh, working on all these 440s and Hemis and you know, uh, all this awesome iron from the muscle car era. And then, then you're like, okay, this is my life. There's no going back. Uh, I'm all in. And then, so you go to work for these, uh, instrument and speedometer shops and stuff like that. So what, what, what was your next big break to, to get out of the instrument panel and into the, you know, the fabrication and, and, and working on the rest of the car? Well, it, um, it was actually Shannon again from Redline Gauge Works. He, um, he was a good friend. He was a big Mopar fan as well. And anyway, he knew that uh, building gauges every year 
you know, month after month, it gets tedious, even though it was interesting. I loved it. I learned it. And then I just wanted to do more. And Shannon said, you know, you should work for uh, Chip Foose. And I said, well, who's that? (laughs) <laughs> at the time I, I i never owned a tv i still don't own a tv i've never bought a tv and so i i i had to learn like who's this guy and um and what's overhauling and and uh so uh ends up he got me an interview i went down there and um <clears throat> so i i had to audition for your first your first car you have to build it for free because they want to know if you're there to be on tv or if you're there to build cars and by day one, they asked me to stay for the rest of the build. And by day three, they asked me to stay for the rest of the season. And uh, 15 years later, I was still uh, back and forth working for Overhauling. And, and uh, it was 15, 15 seasons. No kidding. It will. Yeah. 15 years. Well, yeah, I don't know how many years, how many seasons that is, but, but it was off and on, you know, they, yeah. they'll stop filming for a year yeah. and then they'll say Overhauling's back, you know, so, you know, you go work for other shops. That's why there's so many shops on, um, you know, you kind of uh, rattle off a few of the shops that I work for. And then I opened my own shop because uh, between seasons, they just shut down and and everybody's got to go find other work. And, yeah. 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 Makes sense. So, yeah. well, and, you know, give us an idea. I mean, I've met uh, Chip. I've met AJ. Um, well, no, Chris and AJ I've met, but I, I really haven't. Um, you know, I've met I did meet Chip a long time ago with my son. Uh, at the at the gas station right around the corner from Huntington Beach where his shop is. But what, the thing I noticed about all of them, and including you, all very nice, approachable, down-to-earth people. And uh, if, you know, if they have time, they'll give you the time off their back. Is it true? Are they really all that nice? <laughs> yeah, it was surprising. And actually, um, I just remember one of my, you know, the first builds that I was there, um, they, they were sending the camera crew home at midnight. And um, so here came midnight and here came Chip Booth showing up at midnight, no cameras, no nothing. And we had the car rolled out onto the, the parking lot for some reason. And there he was just down on the ground, rolling in the mud. And I was like, all right, this is going to be a really good job. And, and, uh, he's hundred percent. He, you know, it's kind of all he does. He, it, you know, he, so, so Foos design is a separate shop from overhauling. Right. So, uh, you know, Chip will, just work at Foos Design all day on the the really beautiful high dollar cars that are there, and then just come rolling over to Overhauling and, and work the rest of the night. I mean, he doesn't sleep. I, you know? I can't imagine. So I was going to ask you that. I mean, it seems like the deadlines on that show were um, hard to believe. You know, the fabricated. Show. What's that? No, I said you, it seems like they were fabricated. No, I I almost felt like. How did people maintain their sanity and not kill each other? You know, we remember the Boyd Coddington show where everybody looked like they were ready to kill each other. And that some of that is because, of, you know, who you put into the show. Right. And some of it's natural or some of it's fabricated. But I felt like the one thing that Chip and that show didn't tolerate was people screaming and yelling and cussing at each other. But I can understand that if you're not if you don't sleep for two days, uh, you know, it's got to be tough to just not lose your wits. You know what? I think that um, we just had a different group of people, and the those who were uh, crabby, like crabby pants, they were just they didn't come back, you know, crabby and pants. and uh, yeah, and and it just was a really uh, I don't know, it was a, a really upbeat, like fun group. We all were just having a good time. I mean, there were, I could name maybe five incidences where people got cranky yes. with each other yes, and that's sure. over that 15 years like it just didn't happen we we were all about building the car and and there wasn't i think some of that maybe gets in the other shows might Drop get size. provoked by um the production company sure but we don't have that and that's that's not what we're about and if you were about that you didn't stay very long yeah we had and- carson lev on the show you know he does a lot of marketing for chip and you probably know him and he said from day one that just was not going to be tolerated. That was, it was clear that, hey, production, don't try to create, you know, some stri- strife and tension on the show. It's not going to happen. So it's great to hear that there's still an appetite for that. We did, we've had some guests on since then. And it sounds like, you know, the direction of a lot of these shows on TV is kind of going away from that. They want the drama. They want the tension. They want the, you know, the, the problems, you know, the, 
uh, but between junior and senior, you know, when you're having a bike build off. So it's really hard to still have that without having some hostility because I'm sure that's what the producers like. Yeah, and our, I think our drama was with the mark. So whoever's car that was, I mean, we tortured them for a week. They thought their car was stolen. They thought they were up on drug charges. They thought there was some sort of uh, crazy business going on and then their car's gone, you know, and you know, that their Napa vehicle had been stolen and their job is in peril and, you know, and so that was the up and down is that person who's uh, so excited to get that car in the end that everyone starts crying because they've watched them that whole week that their car was gone, just suffering. And, and it, and it was in real time. So um, a lot of people question, you know, do you don't build it in seven days? And I, and uh, so we would go to SEMA every year. We built a big tent and we built a car in front of a audience. I saw that. Yeah. We, you I was at that SEMA. It's incredible. Or I was at a SEMA where you did that. Yeah. Do you remember which car it was? Um, no, I don't. It was in uh, uh, 2016, I think it was. Or There's, we have done so many. I don't even remember them all. It was, I it's amazing. Do you remember this car? No, I don't. But, but yeah, we built it in seven days at SEMA in front of a live audience. If you want to sit there 24-7, you can. <laughs> um, there was this crowd one time that um, they sat there 24 hours. When we were there, they were there. And... Um, <laughs> ended up there was a, a couple there just a, the nicest two people and they yeah. and they had a body shop and and uh and every moment that they, they wanted verification that that we really did this and by the <laughs> end of that show we had become great friends and they came back and they built i don't know three cars with us something okay. like that they came and worked with the body shop with the uh, body guys and um and built cars with us and the 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 wife and husband both came in and worked with us. I'm trying to remember their names. They were just, we, we were good friends for a, a number of years and, until I moved away. <laughs> but Well, well so, hey, that's great to relive that uh, period of life for you. And I'm sure it was very special. You know, uh, I think a lot of us still think of that show as kind of the gold standard uh, for car, car building shows. I mean, that's, you know, it, it really put car shows on the map on discovery at the time it was a one-of-a-kind show yep and i think you know we owe that to bud bretzman he's he's produced a lot of uh, different all different kinds of car shows but um you know he he made that happen he made it keep happening and now it's back in his hands um so you know he deserves a, a big part of the credit of course chip foos is 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 mr chip foos you know you can't beat yep. that but but uh, as far as having a production company that number one stands behind you and and lets you build cars the way you want to build them and then doesn't bring the drama, you know, uh, Bud's a, a true uh, car enthusiast. He is, you know, 100 percent. He's got his own cars, his own builds. And so I think that helps to have somebody that that's that actually is a car enthusiast. And of course, AJ is his wife. And I did not know that. OK. Yeah. Wow. So, so yeah, I've been but, threatening to get, try to get Bud on the show, but I got to get back to Carson. I'm sure he can connect me, but Bud would be a great guest, but I did not know. Hey, well, he may see this and then he'll want to come explain himself. <laughs> let's just say that again. I said, maybe, maybe Bud will see this episode and he'll want to come explain himself and then he'll oh. be on your show for you. Okay, good. We'd love that. Yeah. Let him explain away. We, yeah. our <laughs> minds must know. Well, and, and so you, if you, even if you were on the show, a lot of guys don't realize that AJ and, and Bud are married because they're super professional. Like uh, she's down to earth. She's a, a supercar girl, um, gets her hands dirty. And, and from day one, you know, there's a lot of girls that are catty and weird and all that crazy Hollywood stuff, but she's not. And, and she, she and I got along like gangbusters from, from the moment I got there, she was like, welcome. And yeah, it always seemed like the two of you were taking up bumpers when doing stuff on the disassembly or the reassembly. It's like, you know, stuff was super big or heavy. You guys had both ends of the part. So, yeah. yeah. And she's, you know, man, AJ in, in no way wants to become a mechanic. You know, she yeah. just loves it and, and just wants to be a part of it when she can. And so, you know, she couldn't be there that often. So it was like tear down and assembly. She could show up, but she has a lot of other stuff going too. She does a lot of other shows and performances yeah. and all kinds of stuff. She's got a modeling career and, and this and that. So, yeah, but but when she was there, she's hands on. She's awesome. Know, fun. 
Yeah, well, let me take a minute, Sherry, and uh, thank one of our awesome sponsors. Are you looking for a smarter way to charge your car's battery? Our friends at SeaTech lead the way in the care and maintenance of vehicle batteries. SeaTech's unparalleled knowledge and continuous investment in innovation means they offer high quality, reliable chargers that are effective, easy to use, and most importantly, safe for the user of their car's electric system. The quality of SeaTech's products Make them the trusted company in the world's most recognizable car brands. Get yours today at smartercharger.com and type in the code SOCAL, all caps, at the checkout and get a 10% discount on all CTEC products. So uh, more and more, you know, I don't want to turn this into the pro woman show, but more and more we're seeing many influential women like yourself in the automotive field. You know, has there been a sea change and interest by women, or is there more open-mindedness? Or maybe is it because there's so many influential women that have really done some incredible work? We just had Lynn St. James on the show, race car driver, Jesse Combs, and you know she's had a tremendous impact. And Danica Patrick, just to name a few, have they paved the way? What 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 do you attribute all this to? You know what I I really can't say. I you know it's like I said I don't I don't. Uh, ever own a TV? I don't. I don't watch much of the TV sh shows and products, but but uh, I do see a lot more women when I go to the racetrack, when I'm out at car shows, and I see a lot of uh, women, single women by themselves. They're not just there because their husband wanted to go, right. and so and uh, and in the industry and through um, SEMA, I think SEMA has a big hand in it and getting women yeah. involved and um, and uh, you know having the uh, um, I'm like forgetting all the names of the women's SEMA organizations um, yeah. because when I was at SEMA, I was always just there building a car. But but you know, there's specific <clears throat> there's specific uh, organizations and 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 I don't know events at SEMA that are specifically for for women. And I think um, the ones I've been to, I see young girls there who are intimidated by the entire thing because they don't realize. You know, for me, I'm in the shop all the time. I hear it. Guys don't remember the name for parts. They're not worried about it. They're not worried about having the right lingo. And I think girls are, and they and they get intimidated by not knowing how to talk about it, not knowing everything about it. And, and I think they're starting to figure out, neither do the guys. Everybody's got something to learn and they're starting to jump in. And and that that's one of the things that when I see those young girls, I say, don't worry about it. They don't know either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's great. Everybody starts from the beginning. You know, it's funny, you're talking about the shop language and all that stuff. We had Amy Shackelford on as our guest, Petro Girl, and she runs a lot of uh, some car rallies, some really high-end car rallies on the West Coast, and, you know, they're, they're really notable. And one of the things that she shared with us, she said, you know what, you just got to start talking like a guy, you know, not, the, not just the car lingo. She wasn't talking so much about, you know, the tech stuff, but more like just roll up your sleeves and don't, you know, she's almost suggesting our language has to be the same because in this car world, there's a certain lingo, you know, and so you have to kind of drop any pretense and just learn the language and speak the language. Does that make some sense? Yeah, it does. And I think um, a big part of it is a sense of humor as well. Um, ah, I think that's how point. I was accepted into the, the group of guys who were working there is you just have fun and you just start joking around and don't take everything so serious. Yeah. Uh, there was a couple of girls that came through that wanted to work there and they would get offended by shop talk or they would you know, take, take things very seriously when yeah. someone would insult their work and, and uh, you know, and you just can't do this. You need to drop your attitude and, and drop all that and just, and just get to work and not worry about all that stuff and you'll fit right in. You know, it's, it's all about working hard, but I kind of, I grew up in a neighborhood where, um, there were uh, five girls in my family and there were probably in my small neighborhood, 30 other families, no yeah. girl. So it was all guys in the neighborhood. And so I just grew up, you know, doing guy things and climbing trees and building forts and, and talking with guys. And uh, I think, I don't know, I, I guess it's just what I was used to going in. I, and, yeah. you know, and so, so I don't really know as, you know, like, um, as someone who hasn't really been around a lot of dudes in a lot of shops, I just always was. So it was just, so you were, you were always comfortable from the get go because of your childhood. 
And I think that makes a big difference, just the fact that you're not intimidated by guys and you're comfortable around guys. Um, sometimes, like Lynn St. James said, it was her mother that got her into cars and she was the influence, not a father. And I'm like, wow. So there's all the stories are radically different, but it's so cool that, um, you know, women no longer have to worry about fitting in or it's a, it's a guy's world because for so long, I think it was, I still think to some extent it is, but hopefully over time it's getting easier and easier to, you know, bust through that door and, and not be judged. Yeah, and I think everybody's judged. The guys are judged, the girls, everybody who walks in to try to build a car, everybody's judging each other. Like, oh, let's see those welds, you know? <laughs> and, see your welds. You know, I mean, it's just part of it. It's, it's a little bit competitive. Yeah. And and for me, that was fun because I was just trying to get better and trying to learn. And, and that's another thing is when, you, when you're when a, you a new, the new guy or the new girl in the shop, just try to learn, like figure it out. People are there that know more than you and let them teach you. And I learned real quick to keep my mouth shut and watch everybody else because I was learning the whole time. And, and, and you know, if you're, it's different in every shop, but at overhauling, these are the best guys coming to work there, the best guys in the world. And you're working with Chip Foose and you just better know that you're there to learn. And right. I mean, it was the best education I could have asked for, you, you know. Hands down. Yeah, that, that beats three degrees and uh, some PhDs, right? Absolutely. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not that they have that. PhD <laughs> in carology. I don't know. I made that up. So, so hey, you you were also on some other um, interesting shows. Like, uh, I think you were on with Brett Michaels on Rock My RV. Well, how crazy was that? This dude's a serious rocker. It seems like cars and rock always go together. And you had this opportunity. Tell us about that. Um, that was that was one of the funnest shows, and it's where I met Bodie Stroud. Um, I got hired as a fabricator by Bud Bretzman, and and uh, so Bodie Stroud was my boss on that show. And that team of fabricators, I've never met a group of more hilarious guys. There were times when we and don't tell Bud because he'd okay. probably get mad when we're not working, but we'd get laughing so hard that we'd have to just say we've got to separate, and we'd all go work in a different RV because. It, it was one of the funnest shows I've ever worked on. And Brett Michaels was hilarious. Uh, oh yeah. When he, one day when he came out, I was, I was cleaning the steps for him to come down, you know, and I was down on my hands and he's cleaning. Steps <laughs> and he starts calling me Cinderella. Cause I'm he's like, this <laughs> and he's like, out of my way, Cinderella. I must use these stairs. He's just a goofball. And, and uh, yeah. And that was a whole, I mean, uh, working on an RV is not like building a 65 Mustang. It is totally different. And, uh, well, it's a lot bigger and there's a lot of, sh sh what is that, aluminum hanging around that thing? And Yeah. And we, you know, one RV, I remember we turned it into a Cadillac. So we took a Cadillac dash <laughs> and I welded it and, and did body work on it to make that Cadillac dash fit into the dash of an RV. It was it just, it was crazy stuff, you know. Well, that'll test your welding skills. Yeah. I, I think that when you start moving metal, you know, and I, this is an ignorant man's perspective because, uh, you know, I, I obviously don't weld or fabricate. You can see my fingernails. There's no way. But I always feel like once you start moving metal like that, you become, you cross into this uh, artist uh, arena, you know, you're, you're moving metal and so you're fabricating. So you're, you know, to me that you become somewhat of an artisan. Do you feel that way a little bit at some point after you've Picked up, picked up some skills. Yeah, and, and you know, when you're when you're welding every day, I was getting really good. And then after a couple of years goes by and you don't you don't do any welding, I was off doing other things. And you realize you you got to keep using those muscles and it, it no takes kidding. you a while to get back into it. Hmm. Uh, but I remember I met a guy, uh, a friend of mine had a rental car that she just bashed in the side of the rental car. And so we took it to this uh, guy and he was... Uh, I want to call him a metallurgist or something, a, me a metal guy, but he, he literally took that dent and moved it down the quarter panel and then moved it back up the corner panel and then took it out. And, and the, the painless dent guys that worked with us, I mean, they're, they're like doing magic with metal. I never got that great. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. 
Yeah, I just saying I was never that good, but I but I did uh, start, you know, when I was welding every day and, we, and I was working on overhauling for years in a row, um, I started stacking beads of aluminum, you know, welds and I would make a, a little roller coaster of, of aluminum beads. And so I got where I, I mean, I, for me, that was like a super great skill to build is, is, is welding aluminum and it was fun. And, and uh, you know, I would say, I never got past where I would say I was a pretty average welder. Uh, I'm not one of the greats, but, but we needed those, we needed people like me because we needed someone to do the floorboards, someone to do things that are broken and then we're behind the, you know, behind the panels. And then those, you know, really skilled welders had more time in the seven day spread to, to do the quarter panels and all the fancy things that needed to be done. You know, so, the highly visible areas of the car that needed yeah. uh, to be welded up. Yeah. Wow. Was, great. It's great to have those skills though. Um, it's good to talk about that. Cause that's, that's probably some of the hardest part of car fabrication, I think, other than, you know, what Chip does when he decides to uh, uh, tuck in the bumpers or chop stuff up, but, you know, uh, change the design. But I guess you still you need welders for that. But you you were on some other shows too, like um, Detroit Speed. Uh, I, you and I were talking before the show started that you built a Factory Five Four Twenty Seven Cobra uh, on Detroit Speed, and, and you and I talked about Dave Smith. How much fun was that? How challenging was that? I mean, tell us a little bit about that experience. Yeah, that that was super fun. We did. I mean, we built this Factory Five car with five girls in five days. Oh, and um, those, out. yeah, those five girls, um, uh, so um, they were, none of them were everyday car builders. And they so weren't. we kind of just were thrown into it. I was the only one who was like a, a, a person who had built cars every day. Yeah. And, um, uh, but I mean, we got it done. We worked as a team and, um, and it was one of the funnest experiences ever. The guys from, Factory Five are some of the best guys I've ever met. Um, Dave Smith and Tony awesome. Zulo. Um, they, I don't know. They just we. They're friendships that I'll never lose. You know, I just talk to those guys. I, I you know, you talk to them at New Year's. You talk to them at Christmas. Say yeah. hello, and um, and they'll just always be friends. It was, it was. A, uh, I don't know. One of the. I, I and I have to say, up until I built a kit car, I would have probably talked smack because <laughs> yeah. that's not a car, that's a kit car, you know? And, um, and then after doing it, I realized this is one of the best ways to build a car and especially a father son build, right. um, a couple of buddies and, and to be able to have that Cobra for a fraction of the cost of what a real one would cost you. And it's a beautiful vehicle. And that I toured the factory. In fact, I did a little, um, um, did you? documentary on the factory itself and just you know went and filmed the whole thing and talked to all the guys it's quality it's hands down quality stuff yeah well we had dave on the show and it was right after this pandemic had started i think three months into uh, the pandemic last year and they had just shut down their factory so what was what was eating him up was the workers were at home but so was everybody else. And so everybody was at home wanting to work on projects or start new ones. So orders were up, work in progress was stuck in the factory <laughs> and the demand went through the roof and <laughs> he was just waiting for the green light. And uh, I don't know, he probably got shut down a lot last year. I don't know where his factory, he's probably up and running by now, but I could just tell he was jonesing because he also, I think he built a new building. So he was really ready to rock and roll, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Well, the same thing happened to me with my business. As soon as everybody got that $1,200 check, boom, the orders came <laughs> rolling in and I was like, Oh shoot. And it, and the thing is that uh, for so many people, you know, there's, it was a hardship and, and people's lives are being destroyed literally still now as we speak. So it was hard to, you know, you kind of just kept your mouth shut. Like, wow, it, things are yeah. going great for my company. And, and then you're, it's embarrassing but it's true that it's the industry it is. Uh, that, that factory five is in that that's a home building it's, and it's a project and it's something you can do when you're forced to be home you're forced yeah. you know to quarantine so it's either, it's either that or have fights with your children and your spouse and that's that's not a lot of fun so you're better off being in the garage and 
trying not to do Zoom meetings with your, your kids' uh, teachers and pretend to be an expert in descriptive geometry. That never works. Exactly. Yeah. Bring them out in the garage and say, let's, let's build this uh, factory five vehicle. Yeah. Well. yeah. We'll, 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 we'll tell the teacher you were on that zoom meeting for algebra and we'll be out in the garage and we'll work on this factory five. That's a lot better. Yeah. Hey, so let me uh, do a shout out for another one of our sponsors right now. Uh, Wicked mobile detailing. Wicked is a luxury mobile detailing paint restoration and paint protection service right here in good old Southern California. They specialize in high-end paint correction, self-healing ceramic, and the all-new graphene coatings, which are awesome, by the way, clear bra, and many other services. Check out their YouTube channel, Wicked Automotive Detailing, and see their professionalism, perfection, and unbeatable customer service, which can always be expected from a Wicked service. Contact them at 617-901-1417 and give your car the devilish good looks it deserves. All right, so... What are your thoughts, Sherry, about all these industry shows like SEMA and the Grand National Roaster Show for car fabricators and crazy fan, you know, car fans or enthusiasts like myself, they're all shut down and, you know, we're just jonesing to get out and COVID still got us locked out of these shows. What the hell? What do you think? I think it's crazy. I think it's, um, you know, if you, if you want a social distance, that's the perfect event to do it at. And, um, we uh, do a car show here that um, I helped to sponsor through my car club and, yeah. uh, and the Iowa, Missouri Ford club did not shut down our show this year. Woo! We had right. the show. We had record numbers because everybody was like, we got to get to a car show. So, so yeah. we broke the record number of cars that we ever had and we're going to put it in, we're going to make it a two day show this year and we're having it. You know, we're going to do it. You just space the cars out a little further uh, let the people make their choices about how they're going to social distance and, and what they feel comfortable with. And let's get the sh car shows back on the road. I mean, it's a little crazy there. It's a car show. You're, you're, you're our social distance in your car. Right. So. Absolutely. Well, you know, we've got a couple of outliers down here that have really kind of, um, sh you know, shunned the, uh, you know, the pressure from local politicians or state politicians. Um, and, you know, and I, I think it's just the resiliency. It's not that they're rebels per se. It's just the resiliency of car crazy people or car enthusiasts. We've got two shows in particular that come to mind. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but we've got something called the Quarantine Cruise. And uh, it snakes around Huntington Beach and PCH and Costa Mesa and, and lands somewhere. Now it's on the, the 11th one is tomorrow. And wow. it's I did not know if I was closer. Yeah, it's once a month, and that darn thing is up to like 2,000 cars now. It's just crazy. And That's just great. 11 shows, but it's kind of the, uh, it was born by, you know, Jason uh, Scudelari from Week to Wicked and, and a bunch of his pals um, that just, you know, said, look, you know, you got to shut down our car shows. we got to do something. So here it is, and it's just booming. And then, of course, down in Huntington Beach, you know, uh, Donut Derelicts, that's really never stopped. Those, really? those guys could care less about anything um, other than their, you know, car show on Saturday. So it's good to see some resistance. You know what I mean? Like whether it's in Iowa or California, you know, we have to survive and cutting, getting rid of our shows is like, it's like a death nail. Like just put it in, put it in and twist it or something. What the hell? Yeah, it's true. It's true. And I was so glad when the, the park department said, yeah, come to the park and do it. And, and everybody was gung ho. We were all down to, to just get out there and have fun. And, and they they have started here. They're, they're calling it Swoop the Loop. We didn't oh, what's it called? The quarantine. Swoop the Loop. Swoop the Loop. Swoop the Loop. So everybody still is doing that. We've done that a couple of times since the whole big shutdown. But, awesome. but yeah, we didn't shut down our car show and we're not shutting it down. Damn right. Okay. Stay strong. I don't know yeah. what the signal is, but hey. stay strong, car people. I love it. Swoop the loop. It's got it's got a great alliteration. Besides, right? Yeah, love it. So I was looking at your background on Wikipedia, uh, and there was something that popped up that I went, "What? Very talented individual." I learned that you're a vocalist, a bassist, and I'm pronouncing that wrong. A keyboard player for some bands in the past. What are you like? Super talented? What the hell's going on? I just like to do a lot of stuff. Is, I like. To is this fun. true? 
Yes, it's true. And I, it was, I was a bassist and I, I had a band called Super Sport 2000. Um, and we played all over Hollywood. Uh, we got pretty well known in Hollywood and, and I sang and played the bass. And then, and then I started uh, with another band called The Rentals and and we, uh, I, I sang and played keyboards, which I don't know how to play keyboards. I just did it. I, they said, won't you play keyboards? Yes, I will. So um, I did that. We ended up getting signed by Madonna and playing with every band that, in, it was 1996. And so any band that was that was out there playing in 96, we played with the Chili Peppers. We played with everybody. Did you really? Yep. Yeah, and um played Madison Square Garden and toured all of Europe with a bunch of bands like Blur over there and No Doubt and No Doubt. Yeah. Glenn S- Stefani. That's Glenn my Stefani. That's yeah. my wife's uh, you know, girl wannabe. If she has a girl crush, it's her. You know, she just yeah. loves everything she does, her clothes, her looks, her just her whole life. Uh, I don't know what well, you can tell her Gwen is a genuine person. She's really sweet. She she could never remember my name. We had a song. It was called. Friends. <laughs> yeah, we, our song was Friends of P. And so she used to always call me P. She just P. She was very bubbly. And, yeah. and uh, she's that sweet. Huh? Oh, that's yeah, she's, she's really sweet. We were neighbors for a short period of time. And and uh, she would always invite me over if they were having some shindig or whatever. And and uh, she's just she's just a, a good person. I really like her. So, well. Good girl crush for your wife, Gwen Stefani. She's she's. It's awesome. okay. Okay. I yeah. She you know I I think she does have a girl crush. I, I should uh, have her watch this episode and let her know that I'm 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 just outing her like this. But um, so I I almost get a feeling like we're talking about you have multiple lives, like chapters of a book. Like hey, we're over here. We're we're doing this music thing and this is going great. And then now we're going to do this car thing and this is going amazing. And then before you know it, next thing you know, you're doing this politics thing and it's not cool, but it's also it's pretty amazing that you have these diverse set of interests and that you can be this successful in these diverse areas. Well, that's really cool of you to say. And I, and I actually, in the last few days, uh, my, I was talking to my parents and, and that's what my dad was saying. He said, how many careers are you going to have, Sherry? I, said, I, can't, imagine, I can't imagine what's going to be next. Yeah. But, but yeah. I was thinking, well, it does. Because we uh, when I was up at the Capitol meeting everybody, then they were looking on Facebook. Everybody's checking each other's Facebooks yeah. out and stuff. And people were like, you were a rock star? And I was like, oh, <laughs> that, was, that was not me. That was the other Sherry Lynn. And yeah. <laughs> I don't even remember her. She was it a sister of mine. Feel, you're right. It feels like a different person. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Congratulations. It sounds like a great life so far. Keep up the good work. So you got to tell us about your company, Malwood USA. I think we talked a little bit about the fact that you guys make hydraulic clutch assemblies for a variety of cars. Are you having some fun owning your own business? Are you sorry you did this? You know, give us some insight into uh, that whole experience. Yeah, I'm loving it. And um, running your own business, you know, then you're in charge of everything. And, and, uh, it, you know, I, I had my own shop out in California, yeah. but that was just building one car at a time, you know, right. for customers. Yeah. Um, this is kind of on my own terms, you know, and so um, it's just, it's been really fun and it's been super successful and, and it's starting to catch on. People are really, you know, seeing that our our hydraulic clutch is, is the best one on the market. You know, I mean, that's the feedback I get. And of course I say that, you know, highly recommended by owner. Well, listen, I'm building a 67 Cougar. I don't know if I can order one from a Cougar. You're probably dealing with Camaros and, you know, uh, you know a bunch of Mopars. But, you know, someday you'll be making one from Mustangs and Cougars, right? I, I do make, I make every single year of Mustang. And well, here, I'll show you, this is the, I don't know. This on the table. what you got. So that's the 66 Mustang pedal. Um, nice. And you can see it just bolts right on. Okay. And and it's so easy to operate. It's like butter. You can push it with your hand. Um, and so you just basically bolt this in. You pull out your old clutch pedal, all the, you know, um, the cable and everything. And then you just bolt this on and boom, you have a hydraulic clutch. But we started out with, uh, that's what we started with is the Mustangs. And then I, if I'm not mistaken, and I'll soon find out, but I believe that the Mustang uh, under dash bracket is the same as the Cougar on it is. on. All, most models 
uh, I, you know, there'll be one or two years that'll that'll be a little different in there, but I we we have one for you. Okay, Here's I'm gonna make it happen. My car's uh, in its fifth year of the paint job, and so, uh, but we're uh, I've selected. I got some spray outs, and I think the fabrication is almost done. But we're putting a, a Tremec in there, so this thing should hook up. I, I'm going to order one. Uh, we'll make it happen. Yeah, we're, we'll. I'll okay, send one right away, and you can and you can verify that it that it does fit the Cougar on a '67, and. Uh, and yeah, I'll get on your podcast, and then I'll sing your praises. There you go. Well, all right. You don't have one, but we'll. we'll you know, maybe that's the future. Yeah, I might have a podcast one day. You don't yeah, know. I think you should. You're, you just got the great personality. I think that's why you've been so successful. Is everybody wants to be around the fun people, you know? Why do you think I'm on your show, Dean? I, you know, I had to be. I, yeah, I no, it's, it's the, I, I'm, I'm, so into the fun, I'm into the fun <laughs> people. I think there's an element where I hope it rubs off on me and I become one of the cool kids. But, um, you know, I don't know. It hasn't worked so far. <laughs> You're one of the cool kids. You're in the group now. I'm bringing, you, I'm bringing you into the fold. You're in. Thank you. Thank you. God, I feel adopted. So, hey, what's this Iowa thing? Did you grow up there? What are you doing in the middle of the country? I mean, there's no shame being in a flyover state, but quite frankly, you're hanging out with a bunch of farmers and, you know, uh, corn and crops. What do you got there? Oh, oh Hawkeye? Iowa Hawkeyes. That's right. Wow. Uh, so I, I uh, grew up in Missouri, just south of St. Louis. Okay. And um, I, I went, well, I was out in California and some friends of mine that I've known since like kindergarten, they asked me to come out and help their dad build a car. And then they wanted me to do some autocross at the racetrack. And I said, sure, I'll come out there. And so um, I'm at the racetrack and, you know, it, it was one of those moments where you just see someone walking towards you and, and it was this guy and he was smiling and I thought he's coming to talk to me. And he was coming to talk to my friends. From <laughs> and, uh, and so later that day, I, I told them, I said, that guy, I want that guy. And they said, Ross. And I said, I don't care what his name is. Yeah. I want that guy. <laughs> and, like you, it's like you were ordering parts on the parts bin for your, your robot you or whatever, right? That's right. And uh, um, so his name is Ross McCombs. And he is the founder of QuickTime Bell Housings. I later found out. And uh, they operate out of Iowa here. And so um, he wasn't moving to California. So, you know, you meet somebody that's amazing like Ross McCombs and you got to you got to move to Iowa. So something's got to give. huh? That's right. So I moved out here and um, and, uh, you know, the rest is history. I've been As they here. say, but look, you're the car celebrity. What kind of crap is that? Don't you have some leverage saying, hey, run your business remotely. You don't really need to be there. Yeah, you would That's think. Vogue now. He's he's pretty good, look, good looking guy. He you know he probably had his choice. So. Oh okay okay I see. <laughs> it's like yeah, I gotta give him like credit. Marrying he's Fabio, good. even though he's not on TV or the movies anymore, you gotta go where Fabio's at. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know he had his his uh, business established out here, and yeah. I can build cars anywhere, and and That's so true. then I end up flying out to other shows, um, you know. And like down to Louisville for the NSRA shows, and, yep. and they would fly me out to California. Um, I was working for Revan TV for a, a, a while, and I would yeah. just fly all over the country with Revan TV because um, they would do a PRI. So I'd fly out the uh, to the PRI show down to the NSRA, out to California for shows, and and so you know you you get out of town enough. It's not like you really live in Iowa, but. Um, but now that I've started my business here, you know, I'm home a lot more. Yeah. You get, you get stakes in the ground now. Hey, you know, it makes me think that when we started this podcast uh, a little over a year ago, <clears throat> matter of fact, I think it was December, 2019 or thereabouts, or maybe it was November. Anyway, we were face to face and I set up this little studio in my other office and, you know, I had guests come down and we weren't even zooming, you know, we didn't have any video capability, just audio and, and uh, pretty soon, I noticed everybody was saying yes. You know, Vaughn Hot Rod said yes. And I'm like, oh, cool, Vaughn Hot Rod's coming down here. And I'm, I was thinking about calling all my neighbors in the, you know, in the industrial park just to show off a little bit. I didn't do it, but I thought, you know, we're really getting good at this. But <laughs> we had Vaughn, and he said, yeah, man. 
uh, you're like, you got me this time of year. I'd be at every show flying all over the country, being an announcer or, you know, being a guest host. And I'm like, uh, I get it. <laughs> you know, so there's a, there's a unforeseen upside to operating a podcast in a pandemic. If you can figure out this virtual stuff. So anyway, we've kind of flourished as far as the podcast is concerned and had to up our game to include zoom so it's kind of cool. We can do both. We've had a lot of people here in the in the warehouse and our studio. But uh, when 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 we get locked down by governments again, you know, which has happened here in California, we just we just resort to this kind of stuff, which is cool. It's OK. And, and, and you're actually a gift to people because you're providing them entertainment and giving everybody a platform to come talk when they can't be at car shows. No. You know, and, and Von Hot Rod's not lying. I see him every single show I go to. So oh, do you really? Can- He's like a world traveler. Yeah. He is a traveler. So he was so sweet. He's like, Dean, I'll tell you what. We're going to be at this car show. I think it was a Muckenthal or, you know, that uh, charity, the charity for, um, you know, all the, all the kids. What charity is that? I can't think of the name of it. But anyway, he was so sweet. He's like, I'm going to help you line up a bunch of people. You're going to go live stream this podcast. I'll get the guests. You know, you talk to them for five or 10 minutes. We'll, we'll knock them out. And I'm like, done, you know. But it never got off the ground. The car, that show got canceled and so did the rest of them for the rest of the year, you know. So we've had all these opportunities, great opportunities, whether it be SEMA with Dave Smith and his booth at uh, Factory 5 and, you know, with Vaughn Hot Rod and they all just put down the crapper. But the good news is uh, we're still building relationships and telling people stories. And so that's what we love to do. Yours is so unique. We love it. Hey, what the heck? So are you? do you still have time to turn a few wrenches, uh, Sherry? Or are you kind of... Busy um, uh, making sausage in the legislative factory. What's going on there? Do you have time? Uh, you know, it, it the the legislature only goes from um, uh, January till about April. So oh, okay. when the sun comes back out and the snow melts, I'll be back yeah. on building cars. And and I still, you know, I come home on Friday nights, and then I work the whole weekend on my Malwood USA stuff. And yeah. and uh, and so yeah, I I, got, I have a Mopar that I'm building. I have a '68 GTS. Mm-hmm. And um, and I'm working on right now renting a bigger shop so I can start to build that again and and put the Malwood stuff to the side. So so yeah, I'm, it's hard to find time, but this is the summer. This is gonna be the summer of Mopar. Just with- summer of Mopar. Um, is it Mopar? Or no car. I mean, is it true? I mean, it, it was true um, until I did overhaul, and then you work on so many different. Yeah. You know, years makes models, every kind of car. And you start to appreciate, you know, the 57 Chevy, uh, you know, before I kind of just would walk right by them. And now yeah. I get it. Like they're beautiful cars and, yeah. and you just find something about every different make of vehicle. That's um, great. So finally I'm Mopar and some other cars. So I, have <laughs> I like it. Mopar and some other cars. So we've got one of our customers dragged in a new uh, FIA, uh, Cobra with a uh, 289, high winding 289 with eight Weber carbs. And he's all like, yeah, man. He said, I really, I've got a 427, but I love this thing. It's really guttural. It just, you know, you feel every aspect of it. And I said, well, let's go for a cruise. And I'm like, yeah, it's a 289. And I'm, we went down the street. We never, I don't think we got into third gear. And I'm like, whoa, that thing is fast. I'm like, so, you know, it's funny how you don't really appreciate uh, too many things until you've experienced them. Then you're like, wait a minute, there's a whole world out there in this car world that, and you think you're an expert. And then you quickly realize not so much. It's true. It's true. And, and you just, just go to a car show or take a ride with a buddy and uh, you're bound to learn something you didn't know. Yeah. You are bound to learn something. Hey, so uh, what, what was the inspiration uh, getting into politics? We've steered clear of too many, you know, other than the car stuff, we haven't been very political, which is great. So we'll try to do that. But what was the inspiration uh, to get you into the uh, state legislature or the state political arena? Uh, to be honest, they asked me to run. Um, I, I, I honestly viewed it as um, an industry that was based on money. And I thought you had to be rich to, to get into politics. And I, you know, when, even when they asked me to run for office, I said, well, I don't have a bunch of money to spend on politics, you know? And they yeah. said, no, you just... Hey, you use other people's money, so, but, it, but it's donations, you know, people donate, people see you and they, they really trust in you that you'll do a good job. 
And so they are the ones who, who uh, donate to your campaign and get you elected. And I had the support of so many people, just small donations, um, just regular people. And, and people that would go out and campaign for me and go door to door and, and tell their friends to vote for me. And, and uh, so, you know, it's, that, that was basically it. You know, they asked me to run and I, and I jumped at it. I was so oh. excited. And, well, what an honor and congratulations. That's really a great story. I think it has a lot to do with the fact that you're a very trustworthy individual, that you're, you've got a lot of charisma. People, you have a high likability factor and your story is, you know, so unique. I, I just... I can't imagine that all that time that you spent, um, you know, with great people, and, you know, like Chip Foose and others, um, and, you know, and, and in front of the camera, it's got to be uh, making a, lo a lot of this stuff a lot easier, even though you're, you're kind of a rookie at it. Yeah, I think, you know, what it takes to be good at politics is to have some common sense and to have morals, to have good moral values. And, and um, those are two things I'll brag about myself is that I do have common sense and morals. And, and I think uh, I got a lot of that from, awesome. from being in the shop and working with other guys who were down to earth, who had, you know, good moral values. Like, you know, I can say everybody on overhaul and that, you know, that, that was the experience for me is, um, you know, people there were just down to earth, good people. And, and uh, I think that's, you know, part of what got me elected. Well, congratulations. That's so, such a cool story. And uh, we'll get started on that hot rod pack here in Southern California. We're going to be, we may need to count on other states to make this happen. Um, you know, we're, you know, where we are here and we're, we're a little bit challenged in, in protecting our lifestyle and our way of life. So, you know, uh, we may need to reach halfway across the country to get this done, if you don't mind. Yeah, I think so. And I think uh, one of the things that I've found is that um, when legislation gets passed in one state, it, then other legislators from other states start looking at it. So yeah. um, if there's anything that you're seeing happening in your state that you think shouldn't be happening, let me know. Okay. And um, I'll, you know, write legislation to make sure that doesn't happen. You know, th things about uh, not letting us build our cars the way we want to, want to, not letting us drive our modified vehicles on the road. Yeah. Um, and, and just all those things that, okay. that we just need to protect ourselves in the hot rod industry. And so, um, you know, when you, when you see those things happening, think of me, write me a letter. I'll, I'll, I'll work on it. All right. Well, don't be surprised when you get one and you say, who the hell is this Dean guy anyway? I think I remember him. Some guy. <laughs> so, all right, cool. Well, listen, if folks want to contact you, hire you, um, you know, build some cars and then, you know, obviously they need some clutch pedal assemblies or, you know, uh, you know, whatever, I mean, or, or reach out to you from the political spectrum. You probably got too many sites to, to list, but what, what, social media, how do people reach out to you? Uh, it's just my name, Cheryl M. Westrich on Facebook. And, uh, and then my company is MalwoodUSA.com. And that's on Facebook as well, under MalwoodUSA.com. So uh, just find me on Facebook and, and you can like my page or or try to be my friend. If you say something cool, I'll probably be your friend. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just, that's, that's basically it. I work off of Facebook uh, in general and then, and then the MalwoodUSA.com site. Awesome. Hey, and you notice I called you Sherry a couple of times. I hope I uh, met the grade. I don't know. Or, you know, I, I did, a, did we get a, a sign one way or the other? I'll let you know. I'll, I'll, I'll send you an email. Email. <laughs> Tough ground. <laughs> You're in, you're in the cool club. You know, once you said that you and Von Hot Rod were friends, that's it, you're in. You never, you never want to see a podcaster sweat, but I think we just did. It's crazy. Well, we can't thank you enough, Sherry, Sherilyn. That, that was a great ride, I got to tell you. I had a lot of fun and, uh, you know, it's great to get to know your story. Very unique and so excited for all your success lately and uh, can't wait to see what's next. And uh, for those of you watching us today, don't forget all of our episodes are on our YouTube channel, the SoCal Car Scene, all separate words, where you can see videos of our awesome guests like Cherry. Please watch, follow, most importantly, subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you prefer to listen to these episodes, please go to all of your favorite podcast platforms like Apple iTunes, Stitcher, Buzzsprout, Google Play, and the SoCal Car Storage slash SoCal Car Scene page. Thank you very much for listening and watching. And that's a wrap.